Okay, uh, I want to introduce our next guest. His name is Dave Farrell, a.k.a. The Memory Whiz, is seen on TV. He's been on with Regis and Kelly, Dr. Oz. Discovery Channel did a show on him. He's a Guinness Book of World Record holder for memorization. Welcome to the program, Dave. How are you? I'm having a great day. How are you doing? Uh, man, I'm doing doing really good. Uh, looking forward to learning something. And uh, you had mentioned a little bit later in this interview uh, should we reserve the time? We're going to try and do that where you can actually teach a memory technique on the air. So if people just stay listening, uh, we're going to do that probably just a little bit after 820 this morning. Okay. Unless people awesome. forget to tune in. <laughs> oh, oh, I was waiting for that. How are the strawberries? But I'm bummed. Uh, the, the strawberries are still very small. I keep forgetting to water them, I think is the oh, problem. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. This never ends. All right, uh, Dave, um, when you were younger, you were diagnosed with dyslexia and ADD, and so this is kind of amazing that you turn yourself into a phenom. How would you do it? Yeah, no, well, this is really what my big quest is, and, and well, I'm so glad that you had me on the air, uh, is to show people that your brain is, um, you know, for lack of a better word, it's very flexible. A lot of people think that your intelligence or your memory or a bunch of different attributes that you have is pretty much frozen at birth, and it's an accident of birth. You know, your, your genetics, if you come from smart parents, you're lucky, and, and so forth. Uh, but I'm actually someone to tell you that your brain can actually be operated. That is, uh, you can, you can manipulate you can use it, um, and a lot of people put this under the category of study skills, and people know that you know if you teach a child some basic study skills, they're going to do better in school, but they don't really think of it much beyond that. Um, I was talking to you earlier about the basic principle behind this. There is a survival mechanism in the brain that gives everybody the ability to memorize something without repetition. We needed that survival mechanism to be able to tell where predators are in the wild, uh, you know, back in the hunter-gatherer days, and we still have that mechanism. It is, it is a powerful feature in our brain, but we use it very, very rarely because we never really trigger this thing when we're doing normal studying or memorizing. All right. Uh, now, without repetition, you have gone through and actually had total recall of 3,000 playing cards in the order that you were exposed to them. How do you do that? It's 3,068, but who's, who's, who's counting? counting? Yeah. I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <us. laughs> um, well, actually, uh, you know, one of the best ways to describe this is uh, if you think of uh, your favorite movie or your favorite trilogy, probably for the three thousand cards, um, it's a lot of information. If you think of you know Star Wars trilogy or something like that. I could probably give you a, an academic test on Star Wars right now, and if you're you know somewhat of a fan, you'd probably score pretty well. And it's probably been ten years since you saw one of those movies. So how can we have such great recall over that? It's because of a lot of things. That that people could think of, you know, there, there, there's a lot of, you know, it's great storylines, it's exciting, it stands out in your mind's eye, but I'm here to say that your brain is capable of this stuff. Um, yeah, my Guinness record, I memorized the exact order of 59 decks of playing cards all shuffled together, that's 3,068 cards in total. Um, <laughs> And I was only allowed to see each card once. It's actually called a single sighting, so the zero repetition. And uh, that my method really works really best with zero repetition. So that's why no one else has been able to break it uh, in in years. Uh, I broke it back in uh, in uh, 2009. Wow, <clears throat> that's just unbelievable. All right. Uh, so can you l let me let me just can I sit there and just do a recall game with you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, we could do something. I mean, here. just I mean, this is this is impromptu. What I want to do is I just want to read off some numbers to you, okay? All right. Uh, do you want to do it uh, two at a time? That's the best uh, way to do it. Uh, just two digits. Two digits at a time. Yeah. So I usually memorize two at a time. Let's go. For okay. It. Let's do this. Um, six three, six four, seven, one seven three, seven five, eight one. Uh-huh. Go. Oh, uh, forwards or backwards? Oh, my word. <laughs> For okay. real? 636-6364-7173-7581. Wow. Or All right, now you weren't writing those down, right? Seven. No, no, no. And I mean, I, I, I understand it's tough to prove via, via the radio, but I've done demonstrations like this before. Let me tell you a little bit. Let me tell you a quick How technique you that you that? guys can use. Well, I'll tell you something that you can use right now, okay? Um, have you ever forgotten where you put your keys or glasses? Yes. 
<laughs> okay, so it's very frustrating. What I want you to do next time, and this is the, the simplest technique I could possibly imagine, is when you set something down in, in the back of your mind's eye, I want you to imagine that a little explosion happens with it, like there's a firecracker attached to your keys, and they go boom. Now, mm. I'm, I know I'm saying this on the radio, and there's crazy people out there. Don't anybody actually blow something up. Thank you. All right? I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that, but, <laughs> but what happens is, when you visualize that explosion, you put it on a coffee table and, you know, you, there's a little black mark when you visualize the explosion, it goes boom. Uh -huh. Your brain wakes up and it goes, wow, I, that's an explosion. I've got to pay attention to that. And it throws everything else out. And that's, that's part of the little trick to wake up your brain. And what, essentially what I have are these memory triggers that I use every time I want to memorize something. You can actually trigger your brain as often as you want, but you can go throughout your whole day, your whole week. The minute you think of keys, that explosion will pop into your head and you'll immediately remember where you put them smart i'm going to try that today <laughs> you know I, I was doing this with um with an elementary school uh, uh a few years ago and i was teaching them uh, times tables. so the number technique kind of reminded me of this um essentially the number technique is uh, i've developed a code that turns numbers into objects so um you know when i'm thinking of you know, when I'm thinking of, of the 71, for example, I could be thinking of, 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 uh, of a cat, for example, and then I can visualize that. So you can see how I can start to kind of make stories out of this and, and memorize, you know, with a little bit of practice. So I was teaching these elementary school uh, kids how to memorize their times tables and getting them to draw pictures. So they all had a bunch of pictures that they had drawn, and by the end of it, they remembered all of their times tables. And I had this little girl I pull on my suit jacket, and I turned around, and have you ever had somebody stare at you with, like, baby seal eyes, like these, these, these Aww. eyes that just stare into your soul. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. So she actually, she actually, the first thing she said to me was, I'm not stupid. Oh, bless her heart. I know. And my, the minute my heart stopped beating, I was like, of course you're not stupid, right? And, and I want to make it clear, nobody ever called her stupid. Her parents and, and her teachers were very, very supportive. But she when just you felt that kid, way. Yeah, when you tell a kid, hey, you know, you're not performing as well as other people, you need a little extra time on your tests, you have this issue or something, all they hear, they don't know, you know, uh, cognitive disorder or anything like that. Right. All they hear is, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, and they start using it as an excuse. And she, I was talking to her, her mom who was there, and uh, she was using this basically as an excuse, not, not in a bad way, she's wow. not a bad kid, but she was just basically saying, why should I try? I have, I have these issues, so mm -hmm. why should I try? What's the point? Yeah. And after she learned this technique, she realized, hey, I'm not stupid. Maybe I should try in my homework. And her mom cried. It was incredible. Of course I she mean, did. I, I do these techniques because, you know, I love the art of it, and I love the ability to take somebody who has a bad memory and just show them what they can do. But, man, there's so many people out there who could be, who could be doing so much right. better. And uh, especially students. I, I didn't even get into the students in, in college. I travel around from college. Tom and Laura, good morning. Right now it's 23 minutes after the hour. Real quick, we're going to dive into this. We're talking with memory whiz Dave Farrow. Uh, we've got a random sequence neuroscience test. This is the list technique. Uh, we're going to give you 10 items and teach you how to memorize them if you get five, your average. If you get more than five up to 10, you're genius. Go. <laughs> All right, so they've got to give us the items, but this is the test that a doctor would give if you're worried about your memory, and I'm going to show you simply how easy this can be, but the only rule I ask is that anybody, you have to do this with your kids. All right, so um, I can say the first item here, uh, we start off with a tree, so everyone try to memorize this. We have a tree, a car, a cat, an umbrella, a swimming pool, an elephant, a bank, um, orange juice, uh, cell phones, and chocolate. So how well do you think you did? You, you'll, you'll do there, Laura. You went really, really fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might have a bit more time, but we have we have short time for, for radio. So if we're doing the test full, you might have a bit more time. But most people would remember maybe tree and car, and then they'd you know, swoop down. Coffee, and think, okay, I mean, I uh, chocolate, chocolate orange juice, bank, elephant. Right, and then the rest you might get in and out of order, but I'm mm -hmm. going to show you how to memorize all of it and 20 times more. 
So all you have to do is essentially visualize the information as if it's a story and put it together in, a, in, a, in an ordinary narrative, like, okay. uh, like uh, uh, if you were watching a movie. So we start off with a tree. Just imagine a tree in your front yard. The next item is a car. So I'd imagine a car crashing into the tree, and a cat was driving the car. If you remember mm-hmm. back to Toons' The Driving Cat, then that's a good reference. Um, the cat comes out of the car and grabs an umbrella and flies up in the air like Mary Poppins. Uh, this is what I would picture. You can picture your own thing, but I imagine the, you know, the umbrella breaks and then they fall into a swimming pool. Inside the swimming pool is an elephant that gets startled. Of course, there's a swimming pool in your ele- an elephant in your swimming pool. Of, of course. course. Um, and then the, the elephant gets startled and rampages through your local bank. So picture your local bank and he's running around and he knocks over <laughs> a giant vat of orange juice because I guess the bank is giving away vitamin C or something like that. <laughs> the orange juice splashes all over everybody's cell phones, and the cell phones start electrically sparking, but you pull your cell phone back. You happen to be there. You pull it back to your ear, but you notice it's melting because it's turned into chocolate somehow. <laughs> now, this is very creative, very imaginative, and you might think of a completely different picture, but I want to know. I want to test you guys. You put the list away. How well did you do? What's the first item in the list? A tree, tree. because and the car ran into the tree driven by a cat. Which used an go. umbrella. Which used an umbrella, which flew away and fell into the swimming pool. That had an mm-hmm. elephant in it. That had the elephant, and he charged through the bank, knocked over the orange juice, picked up the cell phone that turned into chocolate. There you go. Congratulations. <laughs> and I didn't <laughs> cheat. <laughs> now, just as easy as that is what we get with college students and, and, and high school students to memorize their definitions. They'll memorize the, the, the term and then the four or five different points that are later on in the definition, just like that same story. And then, of course, we have other techniques to help organize them so you can literally in a weekend memorize hundreds of definitions and be well ahead of the game, essentially be ahead of everybody in your class uh, by just following these, uh, these principles. Wow. wow. And where do we get these principles? So we, you know what, we made it easy. Even the name is easy to memorize. It's memorymadeeasy.com. So, you know, we make your memory easy at memorymadeeasy.com. How cool is that? That's awesome. Can this help kids who struggle with numbers? You know, some kids who have certain disabilities, their numbers just don't make any sense to them. Is there help for kids like that? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, just dysnumeria, which is like dyslexia for numbers. Um, I've, I've experienced that and I've worked with other people. By using codes, you can have a, a great advantage, and kids really, really love these codes. So, so it's absolutely a fantastic program. Um, we've had kids as young as six and seven years old, um, and, of course, I was also talking off the air about a lot of the, uh, the people who go to med school and pharmacology school also take this program because of the sheer volume of memory work. So it, it's good. For, for all of that huge age range. And we're going back to school now. Uh, we found over the summertime most students can lose an entire grade point, uh, and it's really hard to catch up. It takes about three to four months for them to catch up. But with something as simple as this, within a weekend of using the techniques, you can start memorizing the back of the textbook, and you'll know far more than, in some cases, far more than the teacher. Um, to be honest, one of our biggest challenges, I had I had one student, uh, one, uh, one high school student who was doing poorly, and they, uh, the biggest challenge with it was that the teachers thought they were cheating, and they had to overcome that. So, oh, wow. Um, but so, so they were able to prove it, no worries. But go Very to, quickly, uh, tell us how we, get a, how we get a hold of Memory Made Easy. We're running out of time. Yeah, We've got about 30 it's, seconds it's, left. It's, it's mem- memorymadeeasy.com. Is that go. it? Yeah, memorymadeeasy.com. All Thank right. you so much, guys. This hey, Dave, fantastic. listen, uh, Mr. Memory, was we're, we're going to have you back uh, at some point and talk to you some more. Is yeah, that okay? this was fun. Six three six four seven one seven three seven five eight one. Show off. Show off. <laughs> All right, man. We'll be in touch. Thanks, Dave. Thanks a lot. Appreciate Bye-bye. it. Hey, uh, Chad. I remember Hast- a cat driving a car. Yeah, a cat and driving about a car. <laughs> well, actually, it's the tree. The car hit the tree, driven by a cat with an umbrella that flies away, falls into the pool with the elephant in the pool, who is startled, jumps out, runs through the bank, knocks over the orange juice. Spills it on the cell See, phones, it turns into chocolate. Yeah. There you go.